I'm a second year fiction, and I'm going to be reading a short story uh, for Prout. Um, it is a new story that I wrote this semester, and it's a little bit spooky of a story for Halloween. Um, it is, and I'm going to be reading it on my computer, so it may look like I am um, looking directly at you guys, but I'm just reading my story. It is called Modern Witches. My aunt came home from school depressed and angry with her hair cut short and big fancy words she would use in arguments against the family that makes them feel stupid. They never admit that, but I know they feel stupid because mom gets all red in the face and yells at me more. My aunt and I are only seven years apart, so I just call her Susie. She's the baby of her family and I'm the oldest of mine. And oops, from when my mom was with my dad. I learned that word, oops from the girls in health class when we talked about unplanned pregnancies. Our school is super rural, so they don't talk about abortion or birth control, just unplanned pregnancies and how girls shouldn't be having sex until they're ready for the consequences. I learned about abortion and birth control through the internet like the boys learned about porn. Anyways, I figured I was an oops. My mom was too Catholic to consider anything other than having me and pretending she was happy about it. I grew up going to church each Sunday where I'd watch my mom kneel the entire time and wring, wring her hands together like she was guilty about something. Now that I'm old enough to know about sex and what it does to people, I know she probably felt like God would strike her down right there for running off with my stepdad and having my, ba my baby brother with him, for defying the commandment to never commit adultery or leave your spouse, even if you are miserable and hate them. When I was little and thought God was listening, I prayed in church. I would think real hard, close my eyes tight, and tell them about my weekend and what I wanted. It felt nice, like talking to Santa Claus at the mall. But I don't, I don't do that anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, Susie lives on her own in a small apartment downtown. I don't think she likes being home because she seems sad a lot. And my mom is always talking about how if she hates the place she grew up so much, why come back? I don't know the answer. My mom gets so angry for some reason, I just, I just nod along like I understand. My baby brother, Bobby, laughs at her mom when she's angry, and that's pretty often nowadays. My stepdad makes excuses to be on trips at work all week, so this happens a lot. My mom being angry, me listening, Bobby laughing. I don't think he was an oops. She seems to like him a lot more than me. But maybe that's because he's a baby and can't disagree yet. Susie has been home for a few months now, and Halloween is just a week away. Growing up, only seven years apart, we went trick-or-treating together and watched scary movies. This is before she was sad all the time and before she left for school and came back smart. When my parents were getting their divorce, Susie showed, up, Susie showed me her favorite Halloween movies and bought caramel popcorn from the local grocery. This is before I was old enough to understand everything going on. As we watched witches hex people on screen, ghosts come to life, and big marshmallow men attack New York City, I didn't worry about anything else. People always call me an old soul or mature for my age since I'm only 15, but don't seem like it. I don't know if that's true, but I miss those days when I really felt like a kid and people thought of me as one. That's why I text Susie and ask her to come over to her place after school. When she opens the door, she pulls me to a hug. She was never much of a hugger growing up, but it's nice. She smells like perfume and her place is clean. It doesn't smell like my house, but like Susie. I'm so happy you messaged me. Come in. Let me take your book bag. Are you thirsty? Adults always ask a lot of questions. I sometimes forget Susie is an adult now until she does something like every other adult in my life. Yes, please. I give her my book bag and she sets it on the chair. She motions, she motions for me to sit on her couch as she walks to the fridge. How's your mom? Susie asks, stooping, stooping down to reach into her fridge. She pulls out a can of Coca-Cola and hands it to me. It's cold. I want to say the truth. She's mean and angry all the time. I think something's wrong, but I have become good at small talk, especially with family. We don't say what's on our mind right away, ever. She's good. Her and Josh got married. Haven't they been married for a long time? Oh, I mean, they got married in the church, you know, with a priest. The Catholic church? Susie is paused, like someone is controlling her with the remote. Yeah. She laughs and rolls her eyes. What a joke. An annulment, right? Did your mom pay for that? I don't know. I tap the side of my can't with my finger now. The church can do anything they want if it's for money. God, it's so traditional until it comes to real change. 
She's paused again, the fridge still open with cold air blowing out. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't know what she's sorry for, but I have learned to say it's okay to anyone after they apologize. No, it's not. I'm projecting. She closes the door after grabbing a cola for herself. Religious trauma is definitely a thing for us Catholic kids, but I don't need to sit in my anger. That's what my therapist says. I don't know what she means by religious trauma, and I thought therapists were only for crazy people. That's what mom said when Josh tried to get her to go. I didn't think of Susie as crazy, just different than the rest of my family. How do you feel about it? Susie asked. About what? Your mom and Josh? Getting married for real in the eyes of God, she says with a voice and white eyes, like she's saying something old and biblical. I laugh and shrug. I don't know. You can be honest with me, you know? Yeah, I know. I don't know. It's nice when mom is happy. Did this make her happy? Everyone, even Susie, always talks around what they mean. It bugs me. I don't know if it's because they're adults or what, but it's annoying. I've gotten good at answering them. I like your Halloween decorations, I say, pointing to her fake pumpkins and window decals. Oh, thank you. It's my favorite time of year. Me too. I clear my throat. A habit I have when I'm scared to say something. It's like I can't breathe. Like my throat is closing. Can I tell you a secret? Promise you won't tell? Yeah, of course. She sits down like I'm about to tell her I have cancer or something. It's not that big of a deal, I say. It's just that mom would kill me. Sounds like a big deal. Well, I think I'm a witch. She's paused again and tilts her head like she's trying to listen harder. A witch? What do you mean? Like a witch? I, I don't know. Not a scary one like in Hocus Pocus. More like Halloween Town. You know? Sure, but what do you mean? She has her eyebrows furrowed like she's really thinking. A new mannerism of hers. Something she does permanently when talking with my mom and Josh. I pick up on stuff like that. Well, I don't know. I just thought that there were actual witches around, like online. And did my own research, and they're not evil at all, like the church says. They're just regular people. Right. Wicca, that's what you're talking about. Um, maybe. Is that a person? It's a religion. Here. Susie gets up and grabs her phone from the counter. She types something into Google and hands me it. Wicca? Modern day witches? Yeah, well, I guess I just mean I feel like a witch. I feel stupid. My cheeks are red, like they get when I'm not understood and get frustrated. I need to pee. I get up and leave, half running to her small bathroom. I close and lock the door. I run water so it sounds like I'm doing something, but really, I just stare into the mirror and tell myself to calm down. In Sunday school, when I ask my community teacher why girls can never be priests or anything cool, she told me to not ask those type of questions and had me talk to the local priest. He was young and attractive and had no clue why he chose the life he did. But when I asked him, he laughed and told us us girls had the highest honor there was to be the bride of Jesus Christ as nuns and be life givers as mothers. I knew then it was all bullshit. Us girls had the symbolic power. The men had the real kind, the kind that made the rules. Anyways, my face gets real hot when I'm angry or frustrated or embarrassed and I don't know what to say. When things feel unfair or bigger than me, I become a tomato person. Nora? I hear a knock on the bathroom door. It's Susie. I believe you. You want to talk to me about being a witch? I first thought I might be a witch in school when we learned about the Salem witch trials and I felt bad for the women. I was angry for them. I became obsessed with witches then because I didn't think it was fair. I started to Google things in the evening and then delete my history in case my mom would take my phone and find that I was becoming something she thought was evil. I found the names of some of those women burnt at the stake and memorized their faces from artwork. I couldn't figure out if they were real, if they were real witches or not, but I found websites of real witches alive today, sites that sell crystals and spell books, blogs about mo women moving away from their cities and into the country, covens meeting in public places to pray to stop wildfires or sex trafficking or climate change. It all felt different, like I was breathing in for the first time and exhaling with confidence, if that makes sense. Sometimes I do feel older than I am, like people say. And sometimes I feel like a dumb kid who doesn't know what she is or what she wants. So is this why you feel like you're a witch? Susie asks after hearing me explain myself. We're on the floor, sitting on her pillows with her cans of cola. Yeah. I shrug and feel my phone buzz. That's my mom. I need to go soon. Wait, Susie says as I stand up. I want to help. Help? With what? With you becoming a proper witch. I'll do my research and what we can do is spell. How about that? A spell? Or something? I doubt there are any covens in this hick town, but you can start your own. 
Hell, I'll be in yours. How about that? We'll keep it a secret too. Look, she gets up too, but pauses again. I know what it's like to struggle with how you feel and what you believe. I haven't found any answers for myself and it sucks, but I want to help you find yours. Okay? Okay. I say as my phone buzzes again, I got to go. I need to babysit Bobby tonight. All right, well, tell him hi for me. Susie says as I leave, and when the cool autumn air hits me, I exhale. Sometimes I wonder if I will burst into heavenly fire or if this is just Satan whispering into my ear to take me away from God. But the sun is out, and I can hear the birds, and I haven't burst into flames just yet. There are some nights during the week where Josh is away and my mom works part-time, so I'm in charge of Bobby. I like these nights. Bobby is not allowed baby like the ones at church. He's quiet and plays with his toys. Sometimes he'll string the right words together when I ask him something. He's almost two now and has a lot of Josh's thick blonde hair. After his bath, I comb his hair and hold him in my lap as we watch cartoons. It's peaceful, just me and him. I saw Aunt Susie today, I say, carefully detangling a knot on the back of his head. He gets them so bad because he sleeps on his back and has bad dreams that cause him to writhe around. We share the same room, so I'm usually the one to get up and calm him. I wish we could see her more often, don't you? He nods his head, but I'm not sure if he's responding to me or the cartoon. Are you ready for bed? No. He turns and buries his face to my chest, a sign of defiance. If he can't see me, I can't see him. Don't want to. We don't have to go to bed right away. We could say our prayers and read a story, all right? He pauses, still hiding. Okay. I still like to pray. I do it when I get scared at night after a bad dream and when, I'm, when I put Bobby to bed. Sometimes I feel very calm and wonder if it's real. If God is up in heaven hearing me, I don't feel alone, especially when I pray with Bobby. I hold his little hands in mine and we say the prayers as Catholic kids memorized from birth. The Our, Far, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and five little angels around my bed. Bobby copies what I say sometimes, but most of the time he just closes his eyes and plays along. Who should we ask God to bless tonight? I ask him, doing the five little angels. Bless our mom, bless Josh, bless, bless Aunt Susie and Bobby and me. Bless Blinky, he yells, talking about the Blinky he sleeps with every night. Bless Teddy, I say, about the bear I've had since preschool. He laughs and points to a toy Elmo on our dresser. Bless Elmo? All right, bless Elmo. Have you blessed enough people? Yeah. He lets go of my hands and lays back, holding his blanket up to his face. I love you, Bobby. Love you. I turn off his light and plug in our Virgin Mary nightlight, given to us by, my, by mom, when we both started having bad dreams. Mine started with the dreams of hell and the devil coming to get me in my sleep. We don't know what Bobbies are about, but they sure do scare him. The nightlight seems to help him. You can't sleep without it. But for me, I can't stand it. The warm white light, Mary's sad face staring at me. It makes me feel like I'm the one disappointing her, like I'm the reason she has to be here to protect us in the first place. I don't hear back from Susie until a few days later on Saturday. Josh is home and raking leaves outside. Mom is reading to Bobby in the living room, and I'm in the middle of my homework at the kitchen table when I see Susie outside the front door. Can you get that? Mom calls out from the other room, her voice annoyed. I get up and half run to the door. Can you come with me? Susie asks, looking in towards my mom but not at her. The thing about adults is they never ask each other things directly. They always go through as kids. We are the middlemen for their fights and questions. It was the same way when my parents were getting divorced and my dad would forget my shoes or my mom would be picking me up for school. They never talked to each other. Susie, I guess, has learned the same tactic. Mom, is it okay if I go with Susie? Why? For lunch and shopping. I miss my niece. Did you get your homework, did you get your homework done, Nora? It's almost done, I promise. I'll get it done later. I smile at Bobby, who is pointing at Susie, but my mom turns him so he can't see us. Make sure you let me know where you're at and be home in a few hours. What are we doing? I ask Susie as we get into her car. She has multiple air fresheners hanging from her mirror, so it smells like a mixture of spices and flowers. I found something about witches and I figured, let's go into the woods and try a spell. Do you know what Samhain is? I shrug. I read it online. It's this time of year. All Hallows Eve, or All Saints Day in the church. It's when the spirits of the dead can cross over into our world and vice versa. It's a pagan holiday and why we have Halloween. You've been studying. I look out our front window to see Bobby waving goodbye and my mom closing the blinds. Josh stops raking the leaves to wave and Susie smiles at him. Like I said, I want to help. Did you know that the church took the pagan holiday and made it into All Saints Day to honor the saints? Like, it's not even their thing. 
We stopped by the local gas station to get drinks and snacks. There are no places that would sell sage for us to burn or crystals for us to use, so we instead buy some cheap incense meant to cover up cigarette smoke and flowers to leave an offering. When I read about modern day witches online, something they all talk about is connecting with nature. For me, surrounded by cornfields and cultivated lawns, I'm not sure what they mean. Outside for me has always been annoying with bugs that buzz in my face. Susie puts in an Enya CD saying it's the most witchy music she has. And we drive out into the country where there are some local parks with trails that lead through the woods. If we went any further into the country, we get into unprotected woods where people hunt and would probably get shot by some man. It's a nice fall day out, overcast, cool, with a slight breeze and the smell of dead leaves in the air. It's the type of day that makes me feel alive. I take a deep breath and let it fill up my lungs. Maybe I do understand a little bit of what those modern witches mean about nature. Let's think of a plan, Susie says, as we take our snacks to the bench. What should we do? I open my bag of leaves and savor the saltiness. I don't know. Well, you're the witch. She opens her bottle of iced tea and looks around. A leaf falls from a nearby tree and I watch his descent. Did you know there was a witch burnt here in our town, I ask, looking out at the trees with half their leaves vibrant in color and the other half already fallen off? In the Midwest? Well, it's just a story I heard. I don't know if it's true. Her name is Jane and she helped all the sick people in town with her herbs and medicine. People started to think she was a witch because she refused to get married and knew all the stuff that people thought only people who worked with the devil could know. There was an angry mob and they took it from her home and burnt her alive. It's probably not real, Nora. Don't think about stuff like that. Susie says after a pause, I think what it would be like to burn, to burn alive. I wonder when they heard her screams of agony if they regretted it. If people died when they got sick instead of going to her for help, or if they felt satisfied, like they had done God's work, sent an evil soul to hell and saved their own. I know. I try not to think about it too much. It's probably not real. I look up at her and put a bag, my bag of potato chips down. We should leave an offering for her, for Jane. Try to thank her. It's close to Samhain, right? That means she'll be close. Is that what you want to do? What do we need for that? I shrug, suddenly feeling excited. I don't know, we can improvise. When Bobby was a baby, he got sick and almost died. When we held him, he was tiny and light and coughed as if he were an old man. He was in the hospital for a long time and had to stay under a special light. My mom prayed her rosary daily and never left his side. Then the nurses had to persuade her even to shower and eat. Josh was the one who took me to school dropped me off at my dad's every other weekend, and cooked me dinner. He's a quiet man and didn't talk about how he was feeling during all of that. I wasn't used to being a sibling, especially a sister to a dying brother. He wasn't used to being a father to someone who was his own blood. We often found ourselves just sitting in the same room, quiet. Sometimes the TV would be on. Other times it would just be us. Neither of us prayed, though. When Bobby got really bad, we spent a whole weekend in the hospital with him and Mom. She didn't touch me or say anything, but I didn't mind. She didn't feel like my mom during that time. Bobby was tiny and yellow and gross. The doctor told us he was dying and we should prepare. Our local priest cult was called in to baptize him and give him his last rites. I sat and watched as this happened. The priest out of his colorful robes and in his simple black shirt and pants, his collar was a bright white showing his status. I wondered what, I wondered what it'd be like to have that kind of power. Bobby cried and coughed, but the priest was gentle with him as he, as he said the prayers. Bobby was saved. If he would die, he would not go to purgatory to atone for his original sins. He would go straight to heaven. Last rites are given to the dying to assure safe passage to heaven. It didn't make any sense to me that a baby would have sins already, but it made my mom stop crying, and the priest talked to her for a long time after that. I sat with Josh next to Bobby, and we listened as mom said her rosary over and over. Bobby lived. Whether it was the medicine working, the priest blessing him, God intervening, or luck, he lived. He's no longer yellow, but when he coughs, we flinch. My mom says a rosary every night as if for penance. Josh is still quiet, and we exist in the same space, getting used to life after almost losing Bobby. Life after mom became lost in religion. Life after we didn't know if we witnessed a miracle or a stroke of luck. Susie and I find an open field with a spot to light a fire. This is where we light our cheap incense so we won't burn anything down in the process. It is like something has taken over my body because I follow the steps without thinking of what I'm doing. 
I place the incense into the fire pit and throw the flowers on top. They start to burn. I close my eyes and take Susie's hand into mine. Her hand is warm and soft and she squeezes my hand. I don't know what to say, I whisper. Say anything. We're here to celebrate the life of Jane. I don't know her last name or if she's real, but we brought you flowers and hope you are at peace now. Could you show us a sign to let us know you're here? Would it be her showing a sign? Susie asks, looking around. What should we be what should we be looking for? I don't know, just a sign. We wait. The smell of the burning flowers fills the air. It's warm and dry, like leaves. We wait in silence. I try to listen for any sign that someone is here with us, but there's nothing. We continue to stand and wait until the flowers have burnt to ash. I open my eyes to see Susie looking at the ground, kicking at the leaves with her foot. If Jane was ever real, she wasn't giving us a sign today. I must have messed up. I'm not cut out for this stuff. I don't think it's working. I feel annoyed and stupid, stupid for thinking this would work, annoyed at myself for even trying. I take a water bottle from the picnic table and extinguish the fire in the pit, throwing the water bottle on top to watch it melt. This is stupid. Nora, it's okay. It's your first try and spiritual stuff. It's not black and white. Maybe she was showing us a sign we didn't see. No, it's stupid. It's all stupid, I say, shrugging Susie off when she tries to touch my shoulder. I want to go home now. I feel hot tears in my eyes. Like, they start to hurt from wanting to cry. I'm embarrassed. I hate crying because it always happens when I don't want it to. When mom yells at me, when I can't explain myself, when I get disappointed. Tears. Nora, Susie says. I turn away from her and start picking up the empty bags of chips, stuffing them into the plastic bag. Nora, talk to me. What's wrong? Is this because it didn't work? No, it's... I clench my fist, willing myself to stop crying. It's everything. Everything. It's wrong and it's stupid. What's stupid? I sit on the picnic bench and stuff my face into my hands, trying to hide myself like Bobby does when he doesn't want to go to bed. I don't know where all this is coming from, and I'm embarrassed by it. Susie sits next to me but doesn't try to touch me this time. She just sits there and waits for me to say something. Mom and Josh give me their stupid annulment. My dad didn't mean anything. Her having me with him didn't mean anything. Like, we're mistakes. I wipe my, I wipe my eyes. And that I'm not told not to question anything. I'm supposed to be good and quiet and happy all the time. And it all makes me so mad. I don't understand it. Susie is quiet still. She nods, listening as I continue. And I'm angry that I don't know what to believe. I'm just confused. And I can't talk to mom about it. I feel so alone. I'm defeated and push my face further into my hands. I feel Susie pull me into a hug. She rubs my back and strokes my hair away from my face. You could cry in front of me. Don't be embarrassed, she says as I wipe my eyes. I understand, Nora. It's stupid and unfair, and I'm sorry. Those are my birds, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm proud of you, she says after a few moments of us not talking. She's furrowing her brow again. I'm proud you're questioning and looking for what you believe. I don't do that for myself. I don't do a lot of things for myself. I sit back and look at her. She's staring at the fire pit where smoke is still rising. I get up and pull another incense. I light it with Susie's lighter and I watch it burn. I think of Jane and imagine her as a real woman standing next to us. I think of my mom, who I will come home to later to find praying diligently, afraid of so many things. I think of Bobby, unaware of it all. A boy my mom believes is saved by God. I feel my chest relax, or my breath slow, my tears stop. I look up and see a leaf falling, swaying back and forth until it lands in front of me. I don't want to go home. I say, not yet. I feel light. There's a gust of wind and then leaves rustle, creating a chorus. I close my eyes and I listen. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Hope you have a good night. <laughs>